Coverage now of the crisis in Iraq. Today, ISIS gained control of another key border crossing, this one between Iraq and Jordan. It comes just one day after the terrorist group took hold of another border crossing between Syria and Iraq. They're moving now closer to Baghdad, and their violence seems to have no end. Tonight, we're taking a closer look at the situation in the Middle East. I'm joined by former Deputy National Security Advisor Steve Yates. Thanks for being here, Steve. Happy to be here. I want to start off by giving the viewers an idea of just how many cities ISIS has taken control of so far. They've taken hold of a few cities in Syria along those border regions and in Iraq as well. Where did ISIS come from? I mean, we've heard of them just a couple weeks ago, really, when the violence started. Right. Well, ISIS is an outgrowth of the Sunni side of the Sunni Shia divide in the broader Middle East, which is tied to Saudi Arabia, whereas the Shia side comes mostly out of Iran. In the Syrian civil war, after it became apparent that Bashar al-Assad was not going to be toppled. A lot of foreign fighters poured in to try to struggle through that crisis, ISIS being the pro-Sunni part of that war. Do they have any sort of connection to al-Qaeda? Well, in an odd way, they were considered to be too extreme for al-Qaeda. Right. And so this is a very violent, very radical group, uh, but they're tied in in that they come from Saudi Arabia and are on the Sunni side of this divide. Al-Qaeda is that main terror group that we heard about. You know, right. They were the guys in caves in, back in 2003. ISIS is clearly not that type of terrorist group. They're more modern. They're reaching out to young people through social media. Right. Is this modern-day terrorism? Unfortunately, yes. Terrorism has come a long way in the last 10 years. And so we have these groups that have English language videos that will go out try to recruit Americans, try to recruit assets anywhere else in the broader region. And so we have a modern, violent, radical movement seeking to take major territory in the Middle East. I want to bring up to the political solution. You mentioned this is the Sunni Shiite divide is kind of at the core of this conflict. And President Obama was saying if there is no political solution, we're not going to, you know, go in and really do a lot militarily there. Right. Talk a little bit about that political solution and what the Maliki government needs to do. Well, Prime Minister Maliki is pro-Shia. He had been closer to Tehran, and when he came into power, he had a policies that disadvantaged the Sunnis in his country. Uh, the Sunnis had had advantages under Saddam Hussein, uh, and so this was a little bit of payback. But what it did is it antagonized these groups inside Iraq uh, and created an opening for there to be this kind of a this support for this violent group. There are a lot of people who feel disadvantaged by Maliki, and they see the ISIS group as helping their cause, even though they aren't necessarily as radical as ISIS is. We ran a package yesterday that talked about veterans and their issue about sending in more troops into Iraq. We right. went in there 10 years ago. Was that time wasted to see groups like this pop up again? Well, the gains that were made in Iraq have basically been given up. Uh, now, there are two things that fed the current situation in Iraq with ISIS. One is the Syrian civil war. That was three years of training opportunity uh, for this force to grow. And the other was our withdrawal from Iraq. It did give them an opportunity to cross that border. That border had been crossed many times mm -hmm. during the Iraq war. Uh, Syria was a staging ground for radicals coming into Iraq, and it was a place for them to retreat out of Iraq to regain force before coming back into the fight. So the linkage had been there, but the opportunity was helped by our withdrawal. ISIS is also destabilizing that core center of that Middle East region. Right. What is that implication to us here back at home? Well, if we saw Afghanistan under the Taliban providing harbor to al-Qaeda as being a threat to the United States, then imagine Iraq with much more resources, including some of the resources taken by ISIS that they now use to fund their operation. That presents, I think, an even larger potential threat. We can't know what they will do. We can't know if they target us. But the fact that they have English language recruiting videos would suggest that their objective is not based solely in Iraq. Okay. We've heard, too, a little bit that Iran can possibly help Iraq battle ISIS. Is a solution ever, you know, in, I guess, possible that the U.S. would join forces with Iran, with Bashar al-Assad, to fight ISIS? That's something I think we wouldn't ha have never imagined. Right. And I think pr it's really inconceivable that it could work. Right. Uh, Iran remains a state sponsor of terrorism. Iran remains the force that has primarily bolstered Bashar al-Assad. 
Uh, they have been our enemies in so many ways, and not just our own, that of our allies as well. Very, very difficult to imagine Iran really playing a constructive role in Iraq. They essentially bled out the conflict after the major military operations were over in Iraq. And so uh, at this point, I think the Obama administration is flailing a little bit. They're open to negotiation, open to talks, fine, but no clear objective about what exactly would resolve this. Okay. We'll leave it there. Thanks, as always, Steve, for your insight. Thank you. We'll be right back.